What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. So today we're going to be looking at the all-time best farms from Hermitcraft all the way back from season 3 to season 8 today and these are mainly my opinion. Uh, it's not anything about the drop rates or the XP that it gives, anything like that. It's just my favorite farm designs and things like that. So if you guys have different opinions or farms that you think should be on this list, leave a comment in the section down below and let me know what you think. So starting off with our first farm, you can see it right here, it is Mumbo Jumbo's Enderman farm. And in season 8, he's not allowed to kill any entity in Minecraft, which includes Enderman, so he has to come up with innovative ways to make them die on their own without him necessarily killing them. The way he figures this out is by dropping them onto a dripstone, which will make them die and drop all the ender pearls that he will need throughout the entire season within the first 5 minutes of him building it. This farm makes my list because it is not a traditional enderman farm and it uses different mechanics such as the dripstone and also the different kill chambers rather than one singular kill chamber. It is highly efficient and makes a lot of noise as all enderman farms do, but this one looks absolutely insane when they're all falling in the single tubes, so I thought it was great to put on the list. Next up we are looking at the same episode of Mumbo Jumbo's Hermitcraft Season 8 and this is the Blaze Spawner mob farm that he builds uh, using some different mechanics including a wolf uh, in order to actually kill the blaze and get the blaze rods. Uh, I included both these farms just because they're innovative brand new ideas that really aren't used mainly because they're not as effective as the normal ways of uh, dropping these uh, items so I definitely thought they were interesting to include on this list. Also the fact that he built this in the Hermitcraft world without being able to kill any mobs makes it all the more impressive because if you saw the episode you know how difficult it was and he ended up dying like three or four times. Next up we are looking all the way back at Tango Tech's Iron Titan farm design and this was a major iron farm that worked all the way back in 1.8 and it was absolutely insane how efficient it was. It produced about 2600 iron an hour and looks absolutely incredible with all the doors and everything like that going on. Definitely very different from today's iron farm design so it's very interesting to look back at the old designs uh, that they used before. What's really interesting about this is that Tango Tech wasn't actually on the Hermitcraft server yet as a hermit uh, when he did these designs but he actually was invited to come onto the Hermitcraft server and make these designs for them uh, so that they could use all the iron that they needed and he was eventually finally invited as a full-time hermit on the server. Definitely a huge blast from the past looking at these farm designs uh, and it's very interesting to see how much work you had to put into these early day iron farms as opposed to now where it's just you know small little platforms with villagers and then the uh, drop in the middle. Next up we are looking at Impulse's Wither Skeleton farm design that he used in the Hermitcraft Season 7 and this thing is absolutely insane. It produces so many Wither Skulls, honestly the most I've ever seen from a farm design. Uh, he's of course using a Looting 3 design with a drop chamber and they're all spawning on top in the nether uh, on Wither Roses and that's how he manages to weed out all the other uh, mobs and things like that and only get the wither skeletons. This chest was after just a few hours of AFKing and uh, killing all the withers that came down and as you can see he managed to get way more wither skeleton skulls than you'll ever really need on uh, your Minecraft worlds. Next up we're looking at an increasingly popular design and this is from Suma's Season 6 world. This is a massive kelp farm that feeds into a huge smelting system and produces a ton of XP for whoever pulls out the kelp. The way this works is the hoppers take the kelp out of the furnace and leave the XP behind in the furnaces so it acts as kind of a XP bank and you're able to get tons and tons of XP levels from this. As you can see Suma's currently pulling out all this kelp and he manages to get almost 150 levels of XP within a matter of 30 seconds. So these farms are highly efficient for keeping your XP uh, quick and easy and it's not something that you really have to worry about as much and you can leave the kelp there as long as you want and pull it out just when you need the XP. I believe Mumbo is also going to be working on one of these in Hermitcraft Season 8 since he's not able to kill any mobs and this is probably the best way for him to get XP. 
Next up, we are looking at Impulse's uh, Hermitcraft Season 7 Ice Farm. And the reason I included this, uh, not only does it produce a lot of ice, but the design that Impulse went for with this base looks absolutely incredible as the finished product. Uh, he put a ton of detail into the towers and every part of this build, and so I definitely had to include it in today's episode because it looks absolutely amazing. This is the Ice Fortress. Ice is one of the most useful blocks in Minecraft because it can be used uh, especially in auto farms for all the item sorting systems and especially for creating uh, roads in the nether to get places very fast uh, without using an elytra. Uh, of course, all this needs to produce a ton of ice so Impulse decided to build that massive farm. The next one we are looking at isn't just one farm but rather a district of farms and that is Mumbo Jumbo's Season 7 Industrial District. I include this as just one farm because the build looks absolutely incredible as a finished product and it produces absolutely everything that you could need in your Minecraft world. This farm produces sugarcane, kelp, a ton of mob related items with the massive quad mob farm at the top of it. Uh, pumpkins, cobblestone, absolutely everything and that's why I had to include it in today's video and I just kept it as one because of how it's built all together. It was really great watching Mumbo build this design throughout the season and it was also great to see how he uh, changed designs up to fit the space that he had available and it turned out great. You can see how much wood and cobblestone and everything uh, it produces. It is absolutely insane. And of course he sold day passes for this farm to other hermits so that they could use it and get all the materials that they needed uh, during that day. One of my favorite parts of this build is the sorting system uh, with the water tunnels that run throughout the whole thing and go up to the uh, central location where the nether portal is located. All of it looks incredible and actually is super functional, so it is a great farm design and item sorting system. Next up, we're going to look at one of my favorite farms of all time, and that is a new farm in the 1.17 update, and it is a drowned farm. Uh, the reason this farm is so great is because it produces copper, and the mechanics for it are insanely cool uh, to learn about. Both Tango Tech and Suma have built one in the Hermitcraft Season 8 world, uh, but Tango Tech went with a design by Numbon, and if you've watched the video uh, for how all those mechanics works, it is insanely interesting because one zombie uh, actually enables the spawn of another zombie uh, after being hit by snowmen, so uh, this farm is actually self-sufficient in producing its own zombies and can be super great in producing copper over the long term. This farm is super cool and Tango Tech makes it his own uh, by using some different design choices uh, in here. Unfortunately it does get partially blown up by a creeper which he quickly fixes, uh, but it is still definitely a work in progress design. Uh, it does produce a good amount of copper though, definitely more than you can mine, so it is a worthwhile farm to have in your own world. That concludes our list for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, definitely be sure to subscribe because we have a ton more Minecraft content, including Hermitcraft, the new 1.17 update. Uh, and as soon as Snapshot starts releasing, we're gonna get back into uh, covering the snapshots and seeing what 1.18 will hold for us. Hopefully we get some Warden snapshots soon because I really wanna see that guy in action. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.